video y'all was wanting, bro. We got when comedians cause chaos at award shows. And obviously, y'all know the biggest one there is, bro. Mm, you know what I'm saying? But listen, there are other ones too. So we just gonna uh, uh, watch this video. It is 32 minutes long. You know, it's kind of, it kind of is long, you know what I'm saying? But it is what it is. It is what it is. Award shows and celebrities. Hold on, have you had a, uh, any them. weird ATL experiences, Five? <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay, let me tell y'all, bro. The weirdest one? Fuck. The weirdest Atlanta experience. I'll, I, this was very weird. Listen, so look, on the day of Halloween, right? On the day of Halloween, basically, um... It was also the day that uh 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 um listen okay day of Halloween we left this uh party called the underground um the underground Atlanta listen though we didn't leave we didn't leave because we wanted to leave we had to evacuate <laughs> mm. use your context clues okay boom right so we were in the car we were trying to get out the parking lot because everybody was leaving that motherfucker it was so packed you could not move your car right so i told my little sister i was like yo can you tell one of them if we can uh, um 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 get in front of them just because uh it's really hard to get pie right so my little sister was like yo what you know what i'm saying she just did some normal she said we'll wait right and so <laughs> and so i don't know what it was for some reason them niggas felt like they, it was it was provoking enough for both of them to get out the car, to get out the car, come up to the car filled with niggas dressed up as Mario characters and press the fuck out of us and press the hell out of us, bro. And I explained to them, I was like, yo, bro, it's like really hard to get through, bro. Are we able to get in front of you? Right. And he was like, all right, hold on. Let me see real quick. And and it really pissed me off, even though I could do nothing. Them niggas had. Them niggas had weapons. Every nigga in Atlanta has a weapon unregistered, right? So, boom. He was like, all right, let me see what I can do. They got back in their car. They didn't let us go. They they didn't they, they didn't let us go. They, like, drove past us just because. You know what I'm saying? Just to make us mad, and, and we couldn't do anything. That is the weirdest experience I've had, bro. And they were very recent, bro. Very recent. Because oh the God. comedians can't resist the opportunity to get on stage uh. and belittle celebrities during their night of highest honor. But the fans love these spectacles because we get to sit back and watch the chaos. Pressing people so dressed them. That's honest. what I'm saying, bro. Niggas seen Mario, Mario, Luigi, Most Princess people. Peach, and Shy Guy in the car. They felt obligated well. to up it. You know who My you nigga. are. <laughs> We, we all do. We all do. Today, we are going to take a look at some of the funniest, most savage, and painfully yeah. awkward moments that have come from comedians at award shows. Okay. Starting with Jerry Seinfeld, who exposed these ceremonies. What drugs are motherfuckers in Atlanta oh. on? Comedy legend Jerry for real. Seinfeld bluntly explained for real. his hatred for award shows. No diff. What's more dangerous, Chicago or Atlanta? By HBO. I mean, Atlanta is literally not known as a war zone, so like, I can't say that for real, for real, but it is still very dangerous. 2007. You don't give awards to comedians. <laughs> First of all, comedians don't need awards. Awards are for people that are looking for work. We're not looking for work. Jerry opens with an okay. interesting point. Comedians will not sell more tickets to their stand-up performances based on some pretentious award because being funny is subjective. However, in cinema, receiving an accolade will make producers and directors more interested in hiring an award-winning actor in future films for obvious Hey, that's Timothy Chalamet. Reasons. Yo. You know, I, don't know why I fuck with Timothy with Chalamet as an actor. In this culture, they haven't got a thought in their stupid bedhead hairdo mini brains. Why? Hold on, who is that nigga again? He looks very familiar. Wasn't he in like the Avengers movie or something? This man, why? He pretended to be Bob Johnson. Isn't that motherfucker sexist? I have no idea who this is. It's not genius, ladies and gentlemen. It's not genius. <laughs> Roll the cameras, put on these clothes, stand there, ready? Say what we told you to say. <laughs> Fantastic. He did it. Give this man a huge golden trophy. He's a goddamn genius. As an actor himself, yeah? I'm sure Jerry is just joking here. However, comedians are often writers, directors, producers, and performers of their own. That material. is true, Michael Peel. Shout out. Makes them more deserving of these esteemed awards. And secondly, and even more important, it was in the um, B movie. Your whole career as a comedian. What the is fuck? About making fun of pretentious 
high-minded, self-congratulatory BS events like this one. <laughs> the whole feeling in this room of reverence and honoring is the exact opposite of everything I have wanted my life to be about. Now him clearly expressing disdain for these ceremonies might come as a surprise to you, but comedians before and after him have felt the exact same hatred. Like Don Rickles, Damn. who paved the way you look for like a real life joker, to nigga. unapologetically say what's on their mind. I am so excited to get this cockamamie award. While you may think it's disrespectful to just make fun of an award you're being honored for, it's hard to take it seriously when there are so many award shows that you can't even keep track of them. You have the Golden Globes, the Emmys, the Grammys, Directors Guild of America Awards, the BAFTA Awards, Damn. Screen Actors Guild Awards, Producers Guild of America Awards, Writers Guild of America Awards, the Oscars, MTV Video Music Awards, This BET is just Awards, in case American some niggas don't Awards, win, bro, you gotta go to all the awards. These people spend more time celebrating than they do creating. I get this wonderful TV Land Award and uh, <laughs> whoever designed it is a moron. Now I'm sure you all know the typical Damn. structure of these events. One person will That's be the host crazy. of the entire night, but different celebrities will take the stage to present each award. Usually these celebs read their lines off teleprompters, and often they are reading bad jokes that someone else wrote with terrible delivery. We're here to present the VMA to the best group, and we love everything that has to do with groups. Yeah. Group therapy, group hugs, groupies. Very exciting for both of us because we're both nominated. Like, you telling me niggas can't think of jokes just like that, bro, on the fly? And like, just be funny? Not even jokes. You don't even need to say jokes. Just talk silly. Like, bro, you, you reading a script trying to be funny and shit. Uh, actually, James, I'm not nominated tonight. Oh, come on, Ann, don't be so modest. <laughs> no, I'm they got Harry modest. Potter on here. Not nominated. It used to be. You get naked, you get nominated. <laughs> Not anymore. Not anymore. Which made Don's subtle jab about reading from the teleprompter that much funnier. Let's read these funny lines they wrote for us. Okay. Don then goes on to sarcastically laugh at the jokes. First, it's a thrill to be matched up at the Emmy Awards with Mr. Wharf himself, Don Rickles. The world hasn't seen a pairing like this since John McCain and Sarah Are you Taylor. sure he's not having a stroke? <laughs> Hell no. Nah. It's the deep layers of irony that make that's Don's real, bro. Old so ass good. nigga, bro. I fuck with him. Award shows are pompous. He's they a silly guy. Don isn't afraid to call them out on their bullshit. Yet even before he can get the jokes out, they already laugh and applaud the comic legend. Right but don't you dare try to interrupt one of his punchlines. Oh, Julia Roberts, you live next to me at the beach. You know that. <laughs> Thanks for all the visits. Anyway. Uh... I'm living about two blocks from you. The broad never shows up. Come by and say hello. You're closer than two blocks. <laughs> you have no lines, Julia. Just nod. <laughs> anyway. Uh... And even if the entire ceremony is dedicated to one person, like when Martin Scorsese received a tribute for the AFI Life Achievement Award, Don Rickles will humble them. What does that Why mean? You are the most annoying director I ever had. In my <laughs> Little guy. He's the kind of guy in prison was the squealer all the time. <laughs> Pulling on your pants, like going, let's do it again. Marty, when we see all the films you did, none of them. Y'all think they funny, but they really just read in. They do not think they're funny. They know it's not funny. They just read in the script. got the same treatment the previous year. Clint, I that's, said, that's That's what happened at the Streamer Awards, bro. <laughs> that's what happens at the Streamer Awards. Hey, shout out the Streamer Awards, you know what I'm saying? We love the Streamer Awards, you feel me? But the jokes they were throwing out, they was not hitting. I don't think they hit with any single joke, maybe except like one, but I don't know, bro. They was trying to make zingers and that shit, and it was just not like that, bro. Nobody else has said it, and I said it for It was heart. just not like that, You're bro. You're a lousy actor. This is why you can never get too comfortable at these gatherings. Like when David Mann was presenting at the Neighborhood Awards and Lavelle Crawford caught a stray fat joke. Anybody got some chicken? This nigga's literally fat, too. Lavelle, I know you got Oh, damn. Hey, take your jacket off and cover that side of the audience up. <laughs> I think we can all agree that... Okay, that, that was good, though. That was good, though. ...sniping one of the members of the audience. It's a big year for Jack. He also got in a hot tub with Kathy Bates. But hey, who hasn't? 
One of the most savage roasts came from Amy Poehler at the 2013 Golden Globes. She introduced director Catherine Bigelow, who was previously married to famous director James Cameron. Catherine was nominated for Best Director for the film Zero Dark Thirty, which received a ton of criticism for glorifying CIA torture in the film. I haven't really been what? following the controversy over Zero Dark Thirty, but what? when it comes to torture, I trust the lady who spent three years married to James Cameron. Got her ass. Got her ass. Oh my god. <laughs> Amy has built herself a reputation for. The thing is, though, numbers. the thing is, though, sometimes when a joke gets too crazy, though, you know it's like, ooh, um, what the fuck? Like, you know when a joke gets a little too far, though. Master. Yes, Matt Damon is here. For behind the candelabra. Where are you, Matt? <laughs> Matt, on any other night in any other room, you would be a big deal. But tonight, and don't take this the wrong way, you're basically a garbage person. <laughs> oh, and Tina Fey is damn good too. Gravity is nominated for best film. Okay. It's the story of how George Clooney would rather float away into space and die than spend one more minute with a woman his own age. But sometimes making jokes about celebrities doesn't always go over well. Like the oh. time Sarah Silverman made fun of Britney Spears' children at the 2007 VMAs. But have you- Who thought that was a good idea? Why did she think that was a good idea? What? Like, I mean, listen, hearing it, the description of it, like, hey, bro, Sudex, I appreciate the uh, uh, the 19th month subscription, bro. Real shit. I love you. Uh, you know that, though. I love you, though. Real shit. I appreciate you. Thank you so much. Welcome to the stream. But, like, who thought it was a good idea to make fun of children, though? Mm, maybe make fun of the actual person, not not the children. What the hell? And they didn't even do nothing, though. They, they didn't even do nothing. Okay. Have you seen Britney's kids? Oh, my God. They are the most adorable mistakes you will ever see. They are so cute. They're, they're as cute as the hairless vagina they came out of. I'm, what? I'm serious. They're this cute, you guys. The audience didn't think this joke was very funny, but this was back in 2007 when the internet didn't have a full force grip on everyone's lives, so nobody was tweeting their outrage against Sarah. That was not the case for Bill Burr, who made a bunch of jokes at the 2021 Grammys pre-show that caused uproar online. After a okay. beautiful piano solo from Igor Levitt, Bill was brought on stage and said this. How are you? Was I the only one who wanted to kill himself during that piano solo? Critics exploded online. See, and then like, like, okay, another thing too, like, why are you trying to, the music wasn't even bad. Like, like, no, the joke has to like make sense though. If it wasn't even bad, why do you think that would have been a good joke? If the, if it wasn't genuinely bad, why do you think it would have been a good joke? Cause like, it don't even make sense at that point. Maybe if it was kind of bad and it was like, I ain't gonna lie, y'all. Hold on, bro. Y'all y'all think it, it, there was something a little off with that piano shit, bro. Like, maybe niggas would have laughed, but like, he took it a little too far using the KYS too. Like, my nigga, yo. Yo, dark humor though, guys. Dark humor. It's and just not funny though. Scolding Bill for making such a distasteful joke during a night of honor and praise. Little did critics know, it was only going to get worse. Oh my Bill God. immediately followed up by making fun of the Grammys pre-show as he thought he was going to be hosting the actual Grammys. Only for him to show up to an empty Hollywood set presenting awards to a handful of producers and a few thousand people watching on the internet. I bought a suit for this. I thought I was going to be on TV. I'm such a moron. I am losing so much money right now. For some reason, they had Bill, a white man from Boston with absolutely no musical talent or knowledge, present all of the Latin Music Awards and nominees. All right. Hey, how many uh, feminists are like going nuts? So how, why is this this white male doing all this Latino stuff? And he unsurprisingly butchered just about every name. I can't say this name. Natalie, Natalie, what? All right. Uh, like, no, 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 no. Why did y'all get an unfunny, lame-ass nigga who swear to God his jokes about being 
uh, 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 this cold dude was good, though. It, it's not even funny, though, bro. It's not, he's not funny. He's not. And the winner, uh, the Grammy goes to Natalia Lafourcade. And the Grammy goes to Gustavo Dudamel, conducting the Los Angeles Philharmonic. I will be accepting the Grammy on behalf of Gustavo Dudamel. Congratulations. Dudamel. <laughs> Crush that one. <laughs> and the Grammy goes to Frederick Ballantyne, uh, Angel Blue, Dead Sea Graves. Because of people's outrage, some comedians don't think it's worth it to host anymore. Like Kevin Hart, who decided to drop out of hosting the Academy Awards after he was attacked on Twitter for his unsavory humor. What Kevin happened? Hart was announced to be the host of the 2019 Oscars. What did he make Twitter funny jokes erupted, though? Where detractors posted a series of old homophobic tweets. Nearly all of them were just really bad jokes that seem relatively menial. However, one stood out more than most. Kevin Hart tweeted, Yo, Oh, if my son comes home and tries to play with my daughter's dollhouse, I'm going to break it over his head and say in my voice, stop, that's gay. Chris Why did anyone need to know this, though? Nigga just had to say this. He just had to, though. Like, like unprovoked, though. He just tweeted this. He just tweeted it like no one cared. No one cared. Like, yo, some of these niggas genuinely be just doing it unprovoked. Like, we don't care. Critics also resurfaced an old joke from his iconic 2010 comedy special, Seriously Funny. I'm gonna tell you guys one of my biggest fears. One of my biggest fears is my son growing up and being gay. Hey, stop! That's gay! It's quick. Kevin had apologized for these previous words in 2012. In 2015, he also addressed using gay jokes in his film, Get Hard. Did you think... This is mildly mean-spirited, or at the very least, a little bit dated. I said to myself, this is funny. Okay. Uh, and I what were the jokes, funny, though? Funny, regardless of what area it's coming from. Within 48 hours of the host announcement, Kevin claims he was given an ultimatum. I was given an ultimatum. Kevin, apologize, or we're going to have to find another host. So he ultimately decided to step down. Kevin did not host the Oscars and said recently in 2024 that he would never consider it ever again. Damn. Those gigs aren't good gigs for comics. It's no shot to the Oscars, no shot to the Globes or anything else. Nah, not really. It's just like, you do see the shit you were saying though. Like, like Kevin Hart sometimes hits with some jokes. No one needed to know that you didn't want your son to be gay. No one cared. Yo. I'm scared. I'm like, one of my biggest fears is that my son comes out as homosexual. No, 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 no. We did not care. We did, though. We don't care. We don't care, bro. Why is my fucking shit? Many people like Kevin believe that comedy is under a microscope these days, but it isn't even just everyday people online that get offended. Sometimes it's the A-list stars who, even though they are in the entertainment industry yeah. themselves, get offended. Yeah. Like I've noticed that Tom Hanks always has a sour look on his face. Anyone in the audience not laughing is terrified of being next. One A-lister who did not like being the butt of the joke was Jada Pinkett Smith, and her husband's reaction stamped one of the craziest award show moments of all time. Hey. During the 2022 a hey. hey. Wrong person to do it for, but he still stood on it, bro. He still stood on it. Chris Rock was presenting the award for Boy, best Boy, slapped the hell out of him. Naturally, he opened with some jokes. You know who's got the hardest job tonight? Javier Bardem and his wife are both nominated. Now, if she loses, he can't win. <laughs> Like, Everything was going great until he transitioned to a joke about Jada Pinkett. Uh -oh. Now Chris had a joke during the 2016 Oscar. Five, what you Jada. doing in that situation, nigga? I'm doing the same. I'm probably not gonna slap him, bro. But I'm definitely gonna be like, "Hey, yo, shut your bitch ass up before I go over there and do something to you." Right? I would probably do that, but I wouldn't slap him though. Not. I ain't gonna lie, bro. I don't know what made Will Smith feel like he should have done that, but hey. Type shit, you know what I'm saying? I wouldn't have done that though. That the crowd loved. He slapped the fuck out of him though. Jada boycotting the Oscars is like me boycotting Rihanna's panties. What does that even mean? I wasn't invited. Ironically, this joke was way harsher than the one he was about to deliver. Chris made a joke about Jada, who has spoken openly about having alopecia, a hair loss condition. See, like you're choosing the wrong things to say. 
You're choosing the wrong subjects to joke about, though, at the Oscars. Nigga. Like, y'all got to understand the situation for this humor, though. Chris compared Jada to Lieutenant Jordan O'Neill, the star of G.I. Jane, notorious for her short buzz. And it was a good joke, too. <laughs> it's a good joke. It was a good joke. But not at the right place. Not at the right place. But hairstyle. Based on Jada's expression, she did not like the joke. Will, on the other hand, was laughing. It's unclear if he was trying to mask his anger by laughing, or if he genuinely thought the joke was funny. But then the camera cuts back to Chris, and we can see Will storming the stage uh, until he... Why did he stand up? Why was he walking up like that? Like, Ugh, it's over. Yo, I think Jada put a spell on him at that moment in time. All he saw was red, bro. That's probably what happened. That's probably what happened now that I'm thinking about it, bro. Because this nigga was laughing one second. The camera clips, boom, he's up there, nigga. He's seeing red, bro. See, probably... He gave him... He gave him fucking anger just all on his shit, bro. She put a fucking spell on his ass, nigga. Told him to go up there and attack him, nigga. That's probably what happened, bro. Knowing about all the stuff that Jada Pinkett Smith has done, that makes sense, though. That makes sense, though. Yo. Ultimately smacks Chris in the Ugh. face. He sits back in his seat and yells at Chris, keep my wife's name out of your mouth. The deafening silence in the room permeated when the audience realized this was not scripted, and Chris tried to make sense of what just happened. This encounter made comedians hate award shows even more because Will faced zero repercussions for his actions. He was not kicked out, he was not spoken to by the show organizers. In fact, he won his first Oscar for Best Actor later on in the evening. Hey, hey, I ain't gonna lie, bro. I am not presenting that award if he won that shit after slapping the shit out of me, bro. Evening. Fuck that he gave a five minute speech rambling and crying about how God is calling him to love people and to protect people. He received a standing ovation with Hollywood actors crying in support of him. The standing ovation made me realize how detached Hollywood is from reality. The slap into Yeah, I, I was taught to love people and protect nigga. <laughs> what? Huh? Nigga, shut up, boy. What you mean? What you mean love and protect people? And is likely why we got the extremely safe and not edgy Jimmy Kimmel to host the awards for the next two years. Jimmy Kimmel's and just not funny, funny, though. As you could imagine. Christopher is joined by his longtime collaborator, Killian Murphy, who is just wonderful. Killian is... Interesting fact about his name, it's pronounced Killian when he does drama. When he does comedy, it's Silly Ann. Actually, I take that back. The reason why we'll never get a good comedian to host an award show again is not because of Will Smith. It's because of Ricky Gervais. Okay, who's who Ricky Gervais? An onslaught of savage roasts and jokes towards the guests, sponsors, and even the networks who host these events. The sponsor, Ricky nigga, he was just going for everyone. So at the 2020 Golden what? Globes, that no organizer will dare set themselves up to get decimated like that again. Ricky Gervais what? is a British comedian who is known to push the boundaries with extremely uh -oh, British. material. Politics, social issues, race, religion. There is absolutely nothing Ricky won't joke about. If people thought that Kevin Hart's material pushed the boundaries, Ricky makes Kevin look like a comedian for children. This is so a, how he was okay. able to host the Golden Globes five times. I was going to say insane, insane picture, but it makes sense. It was in 2010, and yes, he was still a savage back then. He was As still a savage back stage, then. He Yikes. Steve Carell. You probably know me as the creator of The Office. <laughs> no, you don't, do you? You think Steve Carell, did you? Oh, oh, he's brilliant, isn't he, Steve Carell? <laughs> Nigga. He did not find that shit funny one bit, nigga. You really gonna get your ass, nigga. No, no wince in his face, stone cold, nigga. Huh. Holy shit, chillax, nigga. The office is not that good, bro. Damn. This. Hey, bro, when he coming out, bro? When the show ended, bro? He thinking about any way he can get him off the map soon, bro, before leaving here. 
Oh my god, bro. Yo. He's amazing as the bumbling office manager. Where does he get his ideas from? <laughs> If you don't know, Ricky Gervais created a British comedy show called The Office in 2001, wow. four years before the American what version. What a coincidence. Ricky's show only lasted one season, but is filmed the exact same way. No music, long awkward pauses, deadpan humor. So he centered. really had a personal vendetta against him realistic but also extremely unrelatable chaos in the work environment. The premise of the show is the exact same and only diehard fans of the American version would argue how it's different. Ricky, oh. like the savage he is, goes on to promote his version of the show, as well as roasting the network hosting the event. What? I think that particular version of the show has jumped the shark a little bit. Then um, watch the original, Fridays, on Adult Swim. <laughs> get the box set that's still available so um, he really had that shit ready though go and get that um i will be making the most of this opportunity i'm not used to these sort of viewing figures <laughs> let's face it nor's nbc so he then goes on to belittle actors value to the world notice how they almost clap for themselves it is an honor to be here um in a room full of what i consider to be the most important people on the planet <laughs> actors they're just they're just better than ordinary people, aren't they? That's, no, they're, 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 we all know that. Um, imagine a world without actors. Oh, God, it doesn't bear thinking about it. Imagine if they ever went on strike. Oh, what would we do? You couldn't replace them. You couldn't replace them with any other profession, lawyers or doctors. Can you imagine a real surgeon doing what Hugh Laurie does in-house? It would be pathetic. Hey, it's like, not that bad. Where do I stand? How's my American accent? What, what's my lines? You know? Hugh Laurie. No cap, like... I feel like his jokes just, like, he runs on, though, like, God damn, when do we hit the punchline? Like, he talks too much with his jokes, and sometimes it's like, okay, all right, all right holy shit, bro, now you just dick riding. Not like that joke. Another celebrity not very fond of Ricky's jokes was Mel Gibson. Mel has struggled with alcoholism since he was 13 years old. He is also known in Hollywood to be pretty outwardly anti-Semitic. In 2006, he got arrested for a DUI and then proceeded to blame Jews for all the wars around the world before Get threatening Get this nigga out of here. So Ricky had to take a jab. I haven't offended anyone. I didn't mean, it's not my fault. There's a lot of powerful people here, so if I said, it's... Honestly, I like a drink as much as the next man. Unless the next man is Mel Gibson. Ricky's comments throughout the night felt distasteful to many around the world. That's Numbers crazy. Numbers don't lie, and he drove NBC's ratings through the roof. The 67th annual Golden Globe Awards presents NBC with its biggest non-sports viewership in the state in six damn. years. The Golden Globe Awards gains 12% in adults 18 to 49 and 14% in total viewers versus last year's telecast. So he was invited back again the next year. Also not nominated, I love you Philip Morris. Um, Jim, Jim Carrey and Ewan McGregor, two heterosexual actors pretending to be gay. So the complete opposite of some famous Scientologist then. Um, what? what? Probably. I don't Maybe understand. With the wording of that joke. Ricky set the tone for the night that 2011 would be even crazier than 2010, immediately attacking the nominees, specifically The Tourist, which was a 2010 film led by Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie that was nominated for Best Motion Picture. Okay. It was a big year for 3D movies, Toy Story, Despicable Me, Tron. Seems like everything this year was three-dimensional, except the characters in The Tourist. Um, I, I feel bad about that joke. I, no, no, I'll tell you why. I'm jumping on the bandwagon because I haven't even seen The Tourist. Who Damn, has? that's crazy. Um, but no. The Tourist was notoriously a terrible movie and many he wondered... He saved that joke, though. He saved that fucking joke right there. Um, but no. The Taurus was notoriously a terrible movie, and many wondered why it was nominated in the first place. Well, if you understand how Golden Globes are chosen, it might make a bit more sense. Okay. The Hollywood Foreign Press is a voting body of about 90 journalists that determine who gets nominated journalists? and wins the trophy. The to get fuck? into the HFPA, you must write for a foreign publication but live in Los Angeles. It's no secret that members of the HFPA like to use their status to mingle with celebrities. 
It's like if I had a real old ass on nigga who wins a Grammy and I started hitting up rappers to have dinner with me. They might entertain it because theoretically I could help them win an award. So you will notice Ricky often says the Hollywood foreign press is corrupt. And it, it definitely is. What the hell? Because it's nominated. So shut up. Okay. <laughs> And I'd like to quash this ridiculous rumor going around that the only reason the Taurus was nominated was so the Hollywood Foreign Press could hang out with Johnny Depp and Angelina Jolie. That is, that is rubbish. That is not the only reason. They also accepted bribes. Let's... Ricky also had to take more shots at Mel Gibson. Our first presenter is beautiful, talented, and Jewish, apparently. Mel Gibson told me that. He's obsessed. And of course, he had to dig into Steve Carell. Got his ass. He hey, Zah. Hey, hey. Hey, hey. Welcome to the Korean stream. Welcome back, Aiden. Well, if I'm being totally honest, who, who got his big break when I cast him in a remake of a show that I created called The Office. He's now leaving that show and killing a cash cow for both of us. Please welcome the wonderful Tina Fey and the ungrateful Steve Carell. They probably friends, though. It's important yeah, no. to know that Ricky doesn't actually have hard feelings for Steve. They are both in on the joke and love to play up the bit. It's funny, he always makes fun of me, always. Um, and he, he's, he's also, you know, per, in a personal way, been very, very sweet to me. Like. Before one of these award shows, he pulled me aside and said, hey, I've got a few things that I wanted to go after you with. Is that okay? And I'm like, of course. So he's, there is a side, there is a, a gentler side to him that people don't necessarily so see. He's such a lovely man, though. But he uh, thinks you're sweet because, just to clarify, you go up to him before an award show and say, I'm going to call you a No cap, man. bro. They got to they gotta just box for fun, though, bro. They be going head to head, bro, just for fun. You. you know? I told him what I was going to say. You know, if I had access to them, I'd warn everyone. Some people just don't like the idea of a person being the butt of someone's joke. So they definitely wouldn't like this stray that Sandra Bullock caught at the end of the night. Okay. The next presenter is a national treasure. Miss Congeniality herself. This down-to-earth girl next door first stole our hearts as a bus driver and then as a railway fare collector. Now, of course, she wouldn't be seen dead on public transport because as she just said to me backstage, poor people are gross and they smell bad. Please welcome Sandra Bullock. Surely, after these attacks, he wouldn't be brought back to host the 2012 awards. After all, the Hollywood Foreign Press did not want him back. With one member <laughs> stating, My worry was that he was insulting. And when I invite someone to my house, they don't insult me. But this is show business. I guess I'm old fashioned. Nigga, this but is not your motherfucking house. This is the goddamn Golden Globes. The ratings were just as good as they were last year. With 17 million live viewers for the Yo, he is show, really so getting niggas views. They clout chasing. Year, and he was as unhinged as ever opening with lines that proved he could care less about this special evening. Tonight, you get Britain's biggest comedian hosting the world's second biggest award show on America's third biggest network. Sorry, is it it's four? It's four. For any of you who don't know, the Golden Globes are just like the Oscars, but without all that esteem. The first presenter he brought up was Johnny Depp and he called back to his previous joke last year about his movie, The Tourist. Have you... Ready? I, I guess so. Have you seen The Tourist yet? <laughs> Damn, bro. He's not... It's not that bad, though. Uh, Some of them are not bad. Uh, no. <laughs> the lead actor of a movie that was nominated for a Golden Globe, admitting that he didn't even watch his own movie the following year, says just about everything you need to know about the value of these awards. Celebrities, like Elton John, have had enough of Ricky's nonsense. Even Ricky wrote on his blog after the event, I've told my agent to never let me be persuaded to do it again. But then 2016 came around and Gervais was made an offer he couldn't refuse. He tweeted, I'm making a list, I'm checking it twice, gonna find out who Who's naughty and nice. Hashtag Golden Globes. Ricky they really keep bringing this nigga back, back so over and over and over again. Most diabolical performance ever. Oh my fucking Shut god. Up. Shut up. You disgusting pill popping sexual deviant scum. I want to do this monologue and then go into hiding. 
Ricky kept reassuring everyone in the crowd he would be nice this evening. He was lying. <laughs> I am going to be nice tonight, and I'll tell you why. The president of the Hollywood Foreign Press just told me that if I say anything offensive or crass or resort to innuendo, he is going to come out here and personally pull me off. So that's an offer I couldn't refuse. <laughs> yes, yes, that is the level. An old man pulling me off. And then again insinuated that this award show is corrupt. One Hollywood publication said that me hosting would mean that some film stars would stay away for fear of being made fun of. As if film stars would stay away for the chance of winning a Golden Globe. Particularly if their film company has already paid for it. Everyone is clapping and laughing because they know it's true. Ricky continued <laughs> to just minimize and bash the award show every which way he could. All female remakes are the big thing. There's a female remake of Ghostbusters. There's going to be a female remake of Ocean's Eleven. And this is brilliant for the studios because they get guaranteed box office results and they don't have to spend too much money on the cast. So... That is crazy. That is no, crazy. But care. like, but like, but like, still though, that is also hinting that niggas don't pay the women, um, the actresses enough to though. You know, but if still, that is tonight, crazy. Remember that no one cares about that award as much as you do. Okay? <laughs> don't get emotional. It's embarrassing. Okay? That award is, no offense, worthless. <laughs> It's a bit of metal that some nice old confused journalists wanted to give you in person so they could meet you and have a selfie with you. Honestly, there is nothing more I can say to add to this. I mean, hey, listen, he's going for the actual company, though, because these niggas really be rigging this shit, though. They really do be. Eva Longoria and America Ferreira aren't just beautiful, talented actresses. They're also two people who your future president, Donald Trump, can't wait to deport. But I'm sure you can tell the energy of this show feels different than previous years. The first three shows he hosted, he was more playful, often chuckling to himself devilishly. But this show, he seems more fed up and actually just trying to be blunt. Oh, this show is way too long, isn't it? It's way too... Dude, this could be half an hour. No, I mean, they keep on bringing this nigga back. He don't want to really come back. He be joking about it. He don't really want to come back, though. Okay. He just, just pushing the limits now. Right. Unbelievable. Some people still think this award means something. The winners, just listen to me. Listen. It doesn't just... Right. When Brad and Angelina see our next two adorable little presenters, they're going to want to adopt them. Please welcome Kevin Hart and Ken Jeong. And for some reason, the producers decided it would be a good idea for Ricky to introduce Mel Gibson, who he had previously attacked multiple times, and this time would be no different. Listen, I'm sure it's embarrassing for both of us, okay? And I blame NBC for this terrible situation. Mel blames we know who Mel blames that was kind of good though on all about it apparently that's what drinking does no <laughs> I want to say something nice about Mel before he comes out um so oh yeah okay here you go I'd rather have a drink with him in his hotel room tonight than with Bill Cosby Please Malcolm, Mal Gibson. I feel like some of these jokes are for like goddamn rich old niggas though. The night that was kind of good. Oh, Celebrities are angry. The Hollywood Foreign good. Press is angry. Mel Gibson is angry. Ricky Gervais is never coming back until 2020, where they asked him to host for the fifth time. Bro. People them them views gonna get these niggas back and back y'all think these new goddamn youtubers and shit are the biggest clout chasers bro or shocked. come on Ricky bro shocked and if we thought his 2016 show was direct and less playful 2020 felt like they he love did not this nigga joke, rather just statements of how much you wouldn't be a problem Hollywood. if they didn't bring him back that's what i'm saying last time i'm hosting these awards so i don't care anymore um i'm joking i never did um NBC clearly don't care either. 
fifth time. So, I mean, Kevin Hart was fired from the Oscars because of some offensive tweets. Hello. <laughs> Lucky for me, the Hollywood foreign press can barely speak English. He immediately set the stage that he would go out with a bang, and timbers were shivered. People from Timbers were shivered. But they all have one thing in common. They're all terrified of Ronan Farrow. He's coming for you. He's coming for you. Look, talking of all you perverts, it was a big year. It was a big year for paedophile movies. Um, surviving R. Kelly, Leaving Neverland, Two Popes. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. I don't care. I don't care. Yo, this is, he did not fuck with that joke. Why does this nigga look like a cyborg? Ew. The blue... Th he doesn't look like a real human. Pharaoh is the son of Woody Allen, who became a journalist and led the charge in exposing Harvey Weinstein for his decades of sex crimes inside the film industry. Okay. Spoiler alert. Um, season two is on the way. So in the end, he obviously didn't kill himself. Just like Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Shut up. I know he's your friend, but I don't care. That, that was good. That was good, though. You had to make your own way here in your own plane, didn't you? Right. Tom Hanks didn't like that one. Many times. He didn't like that one because he was friends with that nigga, bro. He was friends with that nigga. Was snubbed in major categories. Um, unfortunately, there's nothing we can do about that. The Hollywood foreign press are all very, very racist. So. It baffles me how most of Ricky's harshest roasts since 2010 were towards the organizers of the event, and they still hired him five times. But the ending of his monologue was not a joke. So, if you do win an award tonight, don't use it as a, a platform to make a political speech, right? You're in no position to lecture the public about anything. You know nothing about the real world. Most of you spent less time in school than Greta Thunberg. So, if you win, right? Come up, accept your little award, thank your agent and your god, and f off, okay? His wit and his charm we saw in previous years was no longer present. He had used it all up. Nigga, they brought him back five times! Of course! Bro, and, and it kept getting... Hey, bro, I'm telling you, bro, it kept getting worse, bro. It kept getting worse. At this point, he's done for. He's tired, bro. They got them using him, bro, his body. Dude. Starred in Netflix's Bird Box, a movie where people survive by acting like they don't see a thing. Sort of like working for Harvey Weinstein. You did it. You, I didn't. You did it. Shut the f up. Fans absolutely loved Ricky's direct attacks on the privileged class. These harsh jokes are likely the most adversity they had to face all year. Classically, journalists hated his performance. Rolling bro, Stone said, "Bro, we, we don't give a fuck about journalists, bro. We don't, bro. Jur journalists are like journalists are like rotten tomato niggas, bro. Oh my god, why do we Listen, I understand journalists are journalists for a reason. Niggas are going to listen to them, but like, bro, we don't Post care. At the 2020 Golden Globes felt incredibly stale. Salon said, why the Golden Globes and host Ricky Gervais felt particularly pointless. And they Variety still said, hire him time, every single time. Seemed lazy, which is true. It was kind of lazy because it didn't seem like he was joking. But hey, if these celebrities are going to congratulate themselves over a dozen times per year with superficial awards and trophies, then they need a comedian to humble them. No but cow. I think we can all agree that the real winners of these events are the fans who get to laugh and reminisce on the comedic chaos. Listen, listen, sleep. listen. I, 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 I fuck with jokes about like uh, uh, people who are already up there and privileged. Okay, yes. You know what I'm saying? If it doesn't go too far, that's it. That's it, bro. Cause some of these niggas, some of these niggas really sometimes need to know shit because like they don't they don't give a fuck, bro. They in Hollywood, they are up there, bro. They don't care. So I like how they uh 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 a niggas up there and really says something about something, bro. But it's only when it's like about being rich. You can roast a nigga. About or make fun of somebody about being rich and uneducated. You shouldn't joke about somebody having a disease that they cannot control on the fucking on on the podium. That's not really that don't make sense. That does not really good. You know what I'm saying? But hey, that was a W video though. <laughs>